show this morning joining us is our honorable Forobi Desmond Olayewaju of the People's Reporter and the Public Affairs Analyst as we look to review headline stories is captured on the days. Good morning to you, honorable sir. Good morning, Beto, and it's a pleasure to be in the studio and good morning to the juniors. Now, without further ado, let's uh, begin to review the headlines as captured by the first three papers in terms of President Bola Metinibu's written address to the Senate seeking an approval to increase the budget by 6.2 trillion naira. Now, whilst a lot of persons talk about the deficit of our budget and the fact that a lot of projections were hinged on an optimization of our crude oil reserves in terms of our production per day, it seems as though our budget is in deficit, particularly the Guardian this morning looks at it from the angle of our budget deficit. Now, many are saying that quite in the second year of this administration, an additional 6.2 trillion naira is it well poised? Um, Bito, we need to understand that uh, the vision that actually necessitated that letter to the Senate uh, is because of some of the ongoing challenges. And I'm happy that this figure it is not uh, quoted in dollars, and that would have been more to uh, bad to our country. Now, you know, there have been a conversation as regards salaries of uh, workers, minimum wage, and some other issues. I'm happy. <coughs> the president, in his letter to the Senate, talked about uh, about 4 point something, p uh, uh, 3.5 or 3.2 down about for capital expenditure. expenditure. And that is to tell you that that will be for maybe construction of road projects, certain infrastructures and all that. That is not a current. That is not for government aggrandizement or servicing uh, a current or something that happened within the office is for project. Now it now talks about recurrent expenditures and that has to do with salaries and office raises and some other things. Now there have been conversation about increment of minimum wage. So I want to believe that the reason why the president is requesting for that uh, supplementary budget to have to what we have there before is to maybe take care of some of the increments that they will eventually uh, be putting in place for the Nigerian worker. And you know today, uh, we are hoping to get a figure from the federal government. Last week, they were in a meeting with Alero and also the TUC uh, chairperson. We were in the meeting and today we are expecting the Mr. President to announce now that the Senate has given an approval, you know, that bill has been adopted yesterday in the Senate and I hope that the President can now go ahead and announce uh, the minimum wage. Um, okay, thank you um, very much um, for um, sharing this insight. Now, um, there is this sentiment that a lot of Nigerians um, share regarding um, all these supplementary budgets and capital mm. projects. Yeah. Now, a lot of Nigerians have this sentiment that it's going to be business as usual, where um, these um, monies are located for this capital project and they are abandoned at the end of the day. Now, the issue now is how are we going to be sure or how are Nigerians going to be sure that this is not going to be business as usual? Because you can agree with me that there are so many capital intensive projects that have been awarded in the past mm -hmm. and the state of our roads are in great um, disrepair. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know, what are your views or what assurances do Nigerians have that this is not going to be business as usual? First of all, I'd like to let the Nigerian people know that when it comes to the Nigerian project, they are stakeholders. They are critical stakeholders for that matter. And it is important for the people to follow the news, the trends. It is important for Nigerians to understand what is happening in the country. It is not just to jump on headlines and discuss it at that level, but try to read and understand what is the government doing. You will need to understand that it is part of a mission that when you have an appropriation, as challenges unfold, you are expected to go back to the National Assembly to make certain amendments to the, uh, to the uh, appropriation for the year, that is what they call supplementary budget, to meet certain challenges and problems that we are facing head on. Could we say, could we, could we now say because successive governments have not been transparent in management of our money in the past, and then we should now give a dev years to this 
needed to this uh, request that is needed by the country, especially the workers and some critical infrastructure. That is not the argument. People don't understand what is supplementary budget. People have a wrong perception and understanding about what it meant. They felt that maybe it's just money. Uh, it is normal. You don't expect because you don't know tomorrow. Nobody knows for sure. So budget or appropriation is always maybe based on certain things that the country is facing at a particular period or material time. Now, you are expected to see supplementary. You can even see 10 times in a year. It depends on some critical challenges that faces the country. And you know, in solving those problems, you need money. And those money, cannot, you cannot just dip and into the natural territory and bring it down. That's the beauty of democracy. You have to go back to the National Assembly and tell them the reason why that money is needed at that time. So Nigeria needs to follow the news and understand what is happening, not just to jump into headlines and all those kind of um, sentiment. We need to remove them. Now, I am not justifying government in any way, and that is why I've always called on the Nigerian people to monitor and follow the monies. When in a SY, a, 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 a SY amount of money is budgeted or allocated for the purchase of table. Nigeria should follow it to table. Let's not just make it an event that pop up in our news and forgotten after that moment. We should follow the news, follow the event to see the execution of that. And when you see something faulty or when you see some shady news, you speak up. And I know the appropriate um, quarters that will take it up. Even the Nigerian people can take it up and then we can get redress on that misappropriation. Now, now Bakuba has also urged the federal government to review its policies on borrowing and this is in light of our deficit nearing 14 trillion naira mm -hmm. remember we also have a national debt body well above 94 trillion naira on the table as well uh, do you think that uh, the Leonard Abakuba has some point in his asking the federal government to review its borrowing policies what is the what is what uh, is only what uh, reviews was he expecting from the federal government this money is needed first of all for nigeria to go into deficits and um, in terms of um sp uh, sp uh, funding the, the budget is to tell you that the country is going through a phase it is a known fact to all nigerians that the country economy is in shambles is facing a big challenge we have been there this is not the first time that the country is encountering or facing this kind of challenge. Nigeria has always been like this for many years during the time of oil boom. Even when Jonathan, good luck, a billion Jonathan was the president, we still have some deficits. When good luck, when Yahadwa was there, we had some deficits. When Abbasajo was there, we also have some deficits. When uh, Buari was there, we have deficits. It's part of it. You know, people need to understand that it is not bad. When you say uh, deficits, you are talking about you do not have enough money at hand you understand to execute the project but you are now open that you can borrow money from other countries to execute that project or you are open that by the time you sell your crude between now and december you're able to get some amount of the of the money you because the money is not at hand the budget is not it's not that the money is in the end the money is a prospect so we call it deficit it is the money that you know that is sure that is certain that you're going to get from maybe internally generated revenue, taxes and all that, that you can be sure that this is where this one is coming from. But when you're not sure, but you're open, because the country is what? Um, how do they put it? That credit worthy. Nigeria is credit worthy. Nigeria is the largest black nation in the world with uh, vast, vast, markets, vast markets. With vast markets. So that is the potential. That is why Nigeria is credit worthy. And you know that a lot of people will come in partnership ppp partnerships will come people who want to do business a lot of so that's why they say deficits and some cases nigeria goes straight into borrowing you borrow money from other countries that believe in your vision that believes in the project you are collecting money for they will sponsor it is not bad every country collects money america collects the money from other uh bills money and all that from imf and the rest of them so you need to earn from the world bank and the rest of them so it is not bad to borrow money but ensure that that money is used judicially for the purpose of the issue that the money was requested for. Now, this is the beauty of democracy, much like Honorable Desmond has highlighted. Now, yesterday, during plenary on the floor of the upper legislative chambers, the red floor of the Senate, the President of the Senate, Senator Gautula Pabio, read President Bola Tinubu's letter 
seeking uh, the approval to inject 6.2 trillion Naira. Similarly, this was also the case on the floor of the Green Chambers, as a bill seeking to amend the Appropriation Act of 2024 passed second reading to give approval for the release of 6.2 trillion Naira from the Consolidated Revenue Fund of the Federation, and it was read by House Leader Honorable Julius Ivobarev. Now, much like Honorable Desmond had highlighted, 3 trillion Naira out of the 6.2 trillion Naira is to go into capital expenditure while 3.2 trillion naira is for your current expenditure. The Niger Delta Commission also did benefit from plenary sessions yesterday as an approval of 1.9 trillion naira was given by the Green Chambers as well. Now our next papers and our line of conversations also capture more deliberations with a reshuffling of committees on the Red Chambers by the President of the Senate. Now it's not without the controversy of what happened to uh, Senator Ali Ndume following comments he granted on his sister station. Now, let's look at it from the angle of the reshuffling of committees. Many would like to look at it from the more controversial angle of is it the comments Senator Ali Ndume made that is now seen as what many call a sack or reshuffling on the other hand. Uh, you, you, if you followed the uh, speech of the Senate President, uh, Pabio, you will hear it, it was stated clearly. Apabio mentioned some of the things he did on Arise Television that he was granting an interview to Arise TV and he made some degrading comments not just against his party but against the federal government that Ashwajibola I mean, government is, you know, harboring thieves. No, I don't expect Ali Ingume to make such comments considering the fact that he is part of what? The government. If you talked about when he's part of the party as well. He's part of the party and the government is part of the people who mobilize Nigeria to vote for the same people. Now, if you are trying to play the same game now because of politics, I will not take that from you. Because if I want to describe Ali Ndume, I will describe him as part of what? If Nigeria is, the, maybe the streets describe some of those people in powers or that, cont that have over stretching influence in governance as cabals. I would describe Ali Ndume as one of the cabals in Nigeria. So he's part of the system. He's an inner man. In short, he's the chief whip, you understand, to APC. So he should not try to paint himself as a saint to the Nigerian people. Why some of the things he's saying might have element of fact? Because we all know Nigeria. Nigerians are the people who do not really care. Most Nigerians do not really care about the prosperity of the country. But what I want to say is that Ali Ndume should have a more, you know, matured way of describing... Talking about maturity, he is a ranking senator. Yeah. This is not the first time. Yeah. In 2017, he also was suspended for a period of six months. And many are looking at it as his representation of his constituency in the 8th Senate having suffered for the time he was suspended. Mm -hmm. The APC as a party, he represents the good people of Borno South. Mm. This is not Little. an antecedent that is happening for the first time. Little, the question is, is let's leave politics. We understand this propaganda. Why is Ali Ndume, you understand, dining and whining with the same people he called, he's calling thieves? Question mark. He should answer. And why has he not, because it's a, election is won by popularity. You sh if you know you're popular, why not contest election because you think you're popular with any party you can contest election with any party of your choice as a person from adp or mmpp and the rest of them or pdp you don't sit with the same people and come publicly for me even if everything is trying to do is right or is saying the truth which i've not investigated and there are no evidence this government listens and I mean, the man should not just talk that things. He should tell us that X Y minister stole the sum of two billion era in his listing. He has the information. He should not come and throw this country into confusion by making inciting, certain, inciting the polity. He should come and tell us that actually the Ahmed Mutulubu was given five hundred million dollars. He used this money for this. That is how information should be. When you don't give accurate information and correct information and you are accusing people on national television, you are inciting it. You are trying to play politics. You are trying to be smart. I am not going to condone any act of misconduct by anybody in government, but that's not to say that as a, as a, as, as, as a father figure and a what? 
a, 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 one of the key people in the Senate, he should be guided. He should not be mismounting because it's affecting the country. Okay, um, I want to ask you this question. Mm. Do you think um, the action by the Senate President, or, um, is it commensurate with what he did? It is politics. He played politics and got the result because for every action there is equal or opposite reaction. Now, for you to speak against your party, it is described as anti-party. It is not a question of whether logic, morality, or uh, this is a normal politics. Okay. You spoke badly about this party, and it was suspended. And even the senior president advised that he's begging Ali Ndume to leave the party and join the party that he, he, he trusts that most of the people there are saints and contest election and win. Instead of hiding under the same party and speak bad. And see, let me tell you something. Leadership is a trust, and the we all we answer one day. My advice is that I know these people, they meet, you meet with them, you discuss with them. You can as well contribute, make some recommendations on how you think Nigeria can get better. You are not doing that. Do you know the last time he came on board, he said he was co he's collecting money. He said the, the, the uh, ranking senators get about whether 500 million for their 400 million to 500 million for their constituency while others get like maybe 200 million or thereabout and he is enjoying that he can't even boldly tell us that this is a salary he's still playing politics with nigeria they asked him i know he was sharing or somebody who asked him how much do you earn as a senator he was playing politics that he cannot disclose that how much do you get say he collect he gets up to because he's a ranking senator is a normal thing he's enjoying this corruption and then will come out and say you, you, you must go to equity should at least go with a clean hand. So that is what I expect. I'm not supporting the government. I'm not supporting the Nigeria. But I'm just trying to see how we can balance this conversation so that the Nigeria will not be misled or misguided. Okay, but um, looking at the substance of the issue at hand, forgetting precedence, what may have transpired yes. in the past, and looking at democratic principles, yes. do you think that this action against uh, Ndume is in line with democratic principles of the federal uh, government? My dear sister, we need, to de uh, we need to separate what we call reality and ideal. We are all humans, we have emotions, we have feelings. If we are in ideal situation, what Ali Ndume's his action is just an expression. He expressed his own opinion. Mm -hmm. And one of the beauty of democracy is that you have freedom to of express. Speech. Mm -hmm. Freedom of speech, freedom of expressing your opinion. It might not go the way you like, but it is his own right. But you shouldn't forget that where his right stopped, that's where another person's right begins. You forgot when he was speaking that it is all politics. You know, that's why I said democratically, based on the principle, what happened yesterday at the chamber is against the principle of democracy. But the question is, are we in ID society? Answer me. Yeah, but shouldn't we be rooting for one? Yes. That is why I said, you know, leadership is not with mouth. It's by living. The way you live, it is example. You, you teach people by example. Leadership is by example. You know, these days, nobody wants to do what you say. They want to do what you do. You understand? That's what I said earlier, that if you want to go to equity, to justice, go with a fair hand. You cannot be rubbing yourself with corrupt money, driving big, big and luxurious cars, by you know, doing what average Nigeria can do in the internet, because you are privileged or opportune, and then you are coming to the television, to the larger screen, to speak to Nigeria as if you are saint himself. He's not a saint himself. Nobody is a saint. You understand? Everybody is a thief. So calling some people thief, when you yourself, you are not free from being a thief, is what I am talking against in this studio. You understand? I'm not saying that what he's doing is not good. If we are to be any other person who is antecedent, shows that he is a patriotic Nigeria, corrupt free, and is not benefiting from the Jewish uh, offices of uh, from from the national cake. You understand? I can say yes, kudos. But not somebody is playing politics. That is what I want Nigeria to understand. Okay, he is so playing politics, but we cannot be able to tell. What is intentions or future plans okay, or so, motive? So uh, more or less, this is like a tussle of power. It is a tussle of power. You know, twenty twenty seven is around the corner, <laughs> and then you know some people are trying to gain more friends, sympathy, public sympathy. So this is one of the gimmicks 
of some of those gladiators in political space. Well, what do you think about all of this? Well, it's an interesting development. And whilst we greet the conversations with the antecedents, and said, like I rightly said, mm. in January of 2017, in the eighth Senate, then under the Senate mm. President, mm. Dr. Bukola Saraki, mm. a similar issue saw Senator Mohammed Ali Dume suspended for six months mm. when he brought uh, Senator Dimi Munayi and the Senate President as a then into disrepute over allegations of over 298 million naira for the purchase mm. of armored Range Rovers. Mm. He was asking the Senate at that time to investigate them and we found out that that matter lacked anyway. This is the second time in seven years where high-ranking senators such as Senator Mohammed Ali Dume, APC Borno South, has incurred the wrath of the Senate. Now, there are different opinions as to is it ideal, is it realistic, does it have any inclination into the next political elections in 2027? But whilst this is the case, reshufflements have seen Senator Mongono take up a new position as the chief whip. Now, this story is further reported on more newspapers this morning. And just to remind our viewing public of the papers that captured this, should be interested in finding out more. This is captured on the Nigerian Tribune, the Daily News Hub, and the first newspaper as well. Let's pick them up together and just remind our viewing audience of the headline stories where they can find more on this reshufflement. On the Nigerian Tribune, it says days after criticizing Tinibu, Senate sacks Indume as chief whip. Days after criticizing Tinibu, Senate sacks Indume as chief whip. Now, some strap lines beneath that in terms of the reshufflement read replaces him with Mondono. APC says Ndume free to resign from party. Senator Akbabio reshuffles Senate committees, moves him from Appropriation Committee, Deputy Chairman, to Tourism Committee Chairman. <laughs> now, now, the Daily News Hub, it has a different catchphrase, but much with criticisms framing the sentence. It says, for criticizing Tinibu, many are Ndume's afflictions. And lastly, the first newspaper, with the catchphrase, Ndume's treatment, this is clearly tyranny. Nigeria descending into dictatorship, says the Labour Party. Now beneath that you have pictures of prominence, the pictures of the gathering of PDP governors who are reported to unite in a stance as it concerns the crisis in River State and the expectations for an improved minimum wage. The meeting was held in Enugu and you see them there donning the popular Ishiago costume it was quite interesting to see some of those developments as published yesterday. We'll talk more on those developments in the interim, but still on the riders, uh, you'd find more in terms of what is happening in Edo State. Why Shuavu cannot return as Edo Deputy Governor says Obaseke. This is also captured in the first news where you see Edo Assembly appeals Shuavu's reinstatement as Deputy Governor. Another controversial story. Mm. Uh, let, let's talk about that before we go into other papers. Mm. I remember when we sat here a, a couple of weeks ago and we talked mm. about uh, how grievous his scenes were in terms of his aspirations to run under the PDP. Now we hear he has lost the PDP primaries. He's also taking the matter to court. But the courts in some twisted fate have granted him uh, one of the requests I know is behind the, the back of his mind. The payment of his salary from April has been ordered to be paid. Yes. But the Edo Assembly is disgruntled over this development. There is nothing uh, they can do at this time until maybe they appeal, like you said, and the and higher courts, you know, change the uh, the judge the ruling. So the ruling will still maintain a status quo because the high court has the jurisdiction to make pronounced judgment on any matter. And don't forget, in that same uh, ruling yesterday, he had makes a did uh, make another prayers for him to be stated as the dep uh, the candidate of a PDP, and that was ruled out that he has no basis for that. That the person who is there was duly nominated and elected, so there is no way they can grant that prayer. That is to tell you that the judgment was a bit fair, you know, it was not politics as usual. You know, he made he requested for two things. One was granted based on the fear hearing, based on studying the circumstances of his removal. And they said, Well, you are right on this, but this other one you are wrong. This person was duly nominated and elected. So the fact that the assembly is granting, the governance is granting, there has no ways in, in our democracy or judicial system. The best thing they can do is to approach an higher court, maybe the court of appeal or Supreme Court, to see how that judgment can be can be turned. But in the meantime, 
that judgment must be obeyed and that is the beauty of democracy and government okay um so in your um, opinion um what do you think um, becomes of um shaibu's and um, gubernatorial ambition that's for now unless maybe he wants to take it to another court but right now there was a ruling yesterday that there's no basis no evidence no you know you know court takes advantage of what they call evidence if they are material evidence substantial evidence if you do not if you have a case it is not just having a case or crying about something it's about do you have evidence to support that place court is not emotional court is a place for facts and figures where you can present your argument logically and you're able to prove your point beyond uh, any doubt yeah. yes reasonable yeah. doubt you your prayers will be answered that is the beauty of court but in this case he tabled his complaint but without commensurable evidence and the, 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 Supreme Court, the judge looked at the case and he said for this particular one your um, argument is beyond reasonable doubt but this particular one the no basis and they granted him um, one of his they granted one of his prayers which is to be his salary to be paid to be reinstated first mm -hmm. and backlogs of his salary should be paid to him okay um recall again that um an appeal of state of execution um for the judgment has been filed by the state governor um Obaseki. Mm -hmm. now um you know saying that um, the incumbent um, deputy governor mm. remains until the final decisions of the appeal now what should nigerians expect um <laughs> you know this is not the first time that we've had uh, uh judgment and counter judgment in nigeria so uh, it is not uh, a success yet yes the governor has appealed has appealed so it all depends on the argument and the substantial uh, uh, evidence that the person will be going to court with you understand that will determine what will happen next i don't know the i don't know some of the points that is using to back his appeal but if they were logical and beyond reasonable doubt we are we'll be likely see a uh, overturn of that judgment and then the next thing that can happen is for sure, I able to take it to Supreme Court. The Supreme Court is the highest. If that announcement yesterday was made by Supreme Court, definitely the government has no uh, rights. But the beauty of this country, of democracy and the court system is that if you feel cheated, you have the right to seek for redress. And with good evidence, you can actually get uh, your your prayers can get answered. So let's see what happened at the appeal court, and then. Maybe there will be counter judgment again from Supreme Court. We don't okay. Know okay. Um. Let's just go back in time a little bit. You know, when uh, Obaseki came in, he kind of had a good relationship with his mm -hmm. deputy governor, mm -hmm. and um, after the deputy governor, that is Philip Shaibo, was accused of perjury and disclosing um some of the Probably, government yeah. um secret. Yes. Um. She even made a statement that this is um descent into dictatorship and a threat um to democracy. He also made an allusion that it, it's because of um, his gubernatorial ambition. Mm -hmm. Now, do you think that Chaibu stands as a threat to Governor Obaseki? How? In what way? It is not a matter of whether it's a threat or not threat. Like, if you follow the stories very well, like you write the Posit, uh, before now, they used to have a smooth relationship. His problem started when he made known to his principal that he wants to contest for the number one seat of Ondo State. That was that Ondo State. Sorry, I beg your pardon. Uh, that was the beginning of his sin. For me, any other allegation or counter allegation against the person of Philip Shuaibu is to me an object. The main issue remains, and that is his ambition to contest because of some structural and societal factors like that particular election should not be zoned to his not to do not that they've had a fair share of uh, the national the state's cake that all that areas should be represented and him contesting will depend on the right of other people from the other uh, zones in the state that is fair enough 
but any other uh, making public this thing public government is public business i don't think there is anything that what anybody can give out that is against uh, the state but you know if you if i want to impeach you today as a deputy governor i have one thousand and one way to do that so all those allegations that i consider as object they are just to help facilitate the removal of Shuaibu in office. But for me, whether it's a threat or no threat, I see them coming together and becoming friends once uh, he succeeded, once uh, succeeded in stopping him from becoming the governor. One thing is, his stand is that you cannot succeed me. And I want to succeed you. That is the argument. So I believe that after the game, after September, when election is done and dusted, I will not have a new governor. Maybe that is not Shuaibu. Maybe the both of them can still become friends or politically still come together because politics there is no permanent enemy, no permanent friend. It is interest. The interest right now is colliding. It is the interest that is fighting. You know, in every conflict there is interest, there is issue and there are players. So in their case, the interest is you don't you can't not become the governor. I want to be the current governor. The issues are that you want I, I have an ambition and the object are some of other things we are seeing. And don't forget the actors, Shiraibu hand. Is principal so I believe at the end of the day once because normally I can be I can be having issue to be in this office on a particular project but we are friends haven't you seen such situation before so I can be your friend we can be good but on this issue we might have our disagreements that is what is happening and that is politics for you so what you see in a state today is just politicking at play well, discussions continue to greet the broader spectrum of how things would unfold ahead of the off-circle elections in Edo and Ondo states. Now, whilst the Edo State House of Assembly is appealing the reinstatement of Deputy Governor Mr. Philip Shiraibu, it is time that is set to tell. But then again, the adage that says, beyond now is a time for the delivery of the dividends of democracy mm -hmm. to Nigerian people, has been hinged on the student's loan scheme, which is one of the eight priority areas of President Bola Metinibu. Now, the source of this is not from borrowing. The current government has said that it will come from the FIRS accounts from the education tax. Now, we hear that President Bola Metinibu has kicked off the first batch to benefit over 110,000 students. Now, but before we get your angles to this, let's just quickly get highlights of the President's comments and also the CEO of Mel Fund, who is to oversee the disbursement of this monies in the tune of 32 billion now to Nigerian students looking to obtain higher education. Um, building an inclusive society you can find many ways around But you cannot find your way if you are not well educated. Is it tonic for the mind, the health of the knowledge? You cannot even fight the terrorism and banditry. And we have a successful inclusiveness and the law that is necessary for our people to get educated and invest in their own life. We will have been a fair society. We are also very grateful for Mr. President's time that he has spent uh, in inaugurating and also uh, sanctioning the activities of Nigerian Loan Board. And I will say this is my special gratitude and my special honor to be the inaugural chairman of Nigeria Education Loan Board. And I, I will also want to mention that it's not just United Nations sanctioning all countries in the world the very special importance of education in growing their youths, in encouraging their youths, and for the youths to spearhead the development 
of their various countries' activities. Dr. Sawyer, the, the inaugural chairman of Nail Fund, expressing gratitude to the administration led by President Bola Netinbu in catering to the needs of students aspiring to gain higher education, both in tertiary institutions beyond universities to colleges of education and even vocational skills training. A lot of Nigerians are looking at this project and asking, are you sure the FIRS can fully fund the student's loan scheme? Today we see the first part of over 111,000 students to benefit. Uh, Bito, you need to first of all understand that Federal Inland Revenue Service, uh, if you look at what they've been contributing to the national you know, treasury, you will know that they are more than enough to actually succeed in funding that scheme. Now, what I also want to inch on is first of all to congratulate the Nigerian students. Over time, everybody has been clamoring, clamoring and for their own fair share of the dividend of government and democracy from the Nigerian government. Uh, this time, it is the time for the student of the Nigerian people and the youth to marry. It is time for merriment for them because right now they've deeply, seriously, mm -hmm. deeply and strongly dipped their hand into the national theory and they are pulling out something good. Well, we will we'll continue this discussion in a bit, but uh, we also have on standby to share his thoughts following our last headline review all the way from Edo State, a member of the Nigerian Civil Society, Mr. Enatome Andrew, as we look more into the situation in Edo State. Mr. Andrew, good morning to you. Can you hear us? Uh, very well. Thanks for joining us on the show this morning. Very quickly, let's get into this trending issue following the reinstatement of Deputy Governor Mr. Philip Shuaibu in Edo State and the stance by the Edo State House of Assembly, uh, who is frowning at this reinstatement. Uh, this is turning out to be one of those issues people say is critical to shaping up how the Edo people will go to the polls in the off second election. Let's get your thoughts. Uh, we, we, we can't hear you. I'm, I'm trying to see if the connection is from our end, but we, it seems to be from your end. Whilst we try to sort out that connection, uh, if we have uh, a better feed, we will join Mr. Andrew to get his thoughts and he would speak from the angle of the members of the Nigerian Civil Society. Uh, off camera, Honorable Arayba Andrew was trying to make the point for civil societies, pressure groups and whatnot in this discourse. Because most times when we say government, we look at it from the angle of the governor, the deputy, the state house of assembly and the judiciary. We forget all uh, these actors who have a critical role to play in shaping opinion and also deciding where the votes go. As a matter of fact, people who have more effects in government and the civil society and the pressure group, in the real sense, they are the real heroes of nations. But we have not been getting it right in this part of the world due to our social political um, situation in this country. Most people that stumble or struggle, either by accident, whether by omission or commission, find themselves in that place. Some of them do not really understand the concept of pressure group, the concept of civil society. Some is but their pursuit for doing something that actually led them there. People who are intentional, people who get there by purpose or get there with a clear vision of to drive change. You see them that they contribute to the sources of that country. Nigeria cannot just work because we have elected people. Nigeria can only work when the civil society, the pressure group, contributes by positioning and putting government in checks. That is the essence of their activities. And don't forget what they played. You know, governments are supposed to be partnership, the people and the elected officers. Now, when the elected officers are misbehaving or doing what the people do not like. Not everybody or the country will come out. It is the civil society and the pressure group because they are more organized body within different societal strata that can approach because they are organized. They can approach the government and point out some of those gray areas and to recommend policies that can help. And you know, government itself cannot stand without the civil society organizations or the pressure group. And most times, when you see that the government wants to educate the members of the public, it's still the civil society and the pressure group.
they bring together because these people represent the the face of our national life the civil society has supposed to be the mouthpiece of some misgivings in our society but because of economic issue like i pointed earlier some of them their conscience has been beclouded with you know by some small, small there's also the issue of party uh, at cause of time we have just a little less than 10 minutes to wrap up our review of local stories uh let's look at the gathering of the pdp governors in enugu yesterday the dailies this morning also captured that in their lead stories and beneath the masthead on the daily independent you find that story we had looked at the pictures of prominence on the first newspaper as well where the pdp governors were dripped and and, and looking very good in the ishago costume yesterday uh, but this morning the daily independent looks at it from the stance they are taking on the crisis in river states many would say much like Edo state but even more severe has been a breakdown in the unity between the legislative arm of government and the executive now the daily independent this morning has that in its lead story would find beneath the masthead pdp governors back for bara move to tackle with this crisis lament state of economy seek credible elections express optimism of return to power in 2027 support labor's demand for enhanced minimum wage now more on the pdp governors are also captured in the leadership paper pdp governors decry minimum wage delay pdp governors decry minimum wage delay welcome supreme court ruling on local government autonomy suggests political solutions to rivers crisis court bars pdp from conducting congress in rivers unique situation there let's get uh, our thoughts yeah uh, um, at pdp that is the opposition party and then what you expect naturally from the opposition is to look at areas of maybe flaws in uh, the, in the um the ruling party policies and governance and then escalate it that is what they are expected to do now in this case i just want to understand the rationale about the cry concerning the delay thank god this time around not previous government even uh the pdp government apc government some of them they don't have listening years and some of these governments have been characterized by deaf years they don't even give reckoning or attention to some of these cries and that is why you have seen that the swift intervention of president bola Chinubu and the current uh, government of nigeria see that the strike industrial action that was embarked upon some months ago did not last more than just one week we have seen strike in this country under pdp government lasted for months in my lifetime i have seen and then this government has been in negotiation with these bodies since that time even before they went into strike they went into strike because they felt that you shouldn't send young people or smaller people of the cabinet to come and negotiate with us you are taking us for granted we need to tell you who we are that is why they are back on that not that governments did not give listening years government have been listening and one beautiful thing is that they've been they've been able to hold or uh, they didn't use gun they didn't use uh on uh, arrest or force use government force to ensure that the labor and the tuc you know dance along with their own tone the labor the labor and tuc while maintaining their stand they are now in a fair negotiation that is government like i always say that government is partnership the labor the government their partner in progress you don't expect competitive behavior like burning down infrastructure shutting down the country there's need there's no need for that if you understand your role as a partner in progress you know what partner in progress is that you're a stakeholder in the development of something you will not want it to destroy industrial action will destroy this country now the fear of pdp is that could it be that the government in power has successfully come or cage the nlc and the tc it is not it's just that they're having a reasonable conversation negotiation and they're actually breaking ground and reaching certain compromise and that is why they are worried that so this government understand the key this government also made the key to labor and tuc because what the 
opposition party will be expecting that they should shut down this country and that you know we help them to win more elections that is on a political note but now i want other stakeholders not just the governors now not just pdp i expect apc governors mm -hmm. apc members the civil society to join the pdp government to see that if it is fair enough if there is a shady deal going on let the pdp review because even the pdp now they are confused imagine governors are confused about what is happening so the other people too are more confused so i expect the president today to break the deadline well, and tell uh, nigerians this is what we have been doing and this is the amount that has been agreed upon well um as a matter of fact um it's been noted that there is need for um the president to further engage in more consultations on the issue of this um minimum wage now um with the ruling of the supreme court on the local government autonomy and this minimum wage issue do you think that the local government has the capacity to implement this um, minimum wage when passed? Of course. Government? Of course. Of course. First of all, you need to know that why do we call for autonomy in the first place? Because the money that is meant for payment of salary and putting in place critical infrastructure in the local government have not been going directly to this local government chairman in the past. And that was why every Nigerians have been calling. Thank God for the president. He will now swift, move swift action by instituting that court case. And at the end of the day, we have a superior ruling from the Supreme Court, which has become a verdict and binding on governors to allow the state local government to beat. Don't forget that some local go some local some, some governors in the state are grunting. Some are grumbling, some are crying, oh, but there is nothing they can do. Now, the local government administration now have more money, you know. But maybe we are expecting that they are supposed to use this money to do some infrastructure within the local settings. But if there is increment in the minimum wage, you understand. They cannot use the money to pay salary. But one thing I want to say to the local government chairman, the 774 local government chairman in Nigeria is that they should also look for internal way to generate money. Mm. You have more money now. You invest on things that can bring more money to your local government. It's not just about the salary. We have to look at sustainable sustainability. And sustainability has to do with impacting lives and is creating opportunities. We have local government owns the land. Local government owns the youth. Local government is the smallest unit of governance in Nigeria and we have some challenges that if they can solve it to bring more money to the local government and the whatsoever challenge that they're having maybe increment of salary minimum wage they will be able to pay well um thank you very much and um, the conversation continues Thank you so much, Honorable Desmond, for making this discussion very insightful. And this